It's time for Tales of Terror, only on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that all children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. Ghostly Wonders, written by Jamie Lynn Michaels and narrated by Tracy Babian. A short story recovered from the archives, April 10th, 2022. I keep thinking to myself, God, you've got to sleep. Waking up in the middle of the night at, oh, hang on, 3.12 in the morning? Oh, this was not my type of fun. Something had woke me out of a dead sound sleep, though. I just figured it was me and way too much coffee. <laughs> you know, I used to think people were nuts for not drinking coffee after 6 at night. Now I understood why. Wait a minute. What was that noise? I scanned the dimly lit living room of the RZ, but saw nothing moving. Ah, it was probably the dog turning over, I thought to myself. I continued to sit, trying to get my mind to agree that I needed to lay back down. Suddenly, I smelled something. Coffee? I looked over at the stove, but I realized I wasn't making coffee. I could almost swear that I could hear it perking in the old rearware stovetop coffee pot. <sighs> oh well, I thought as I shrugged off the pot. I got up and grabbed a bottle of water so I could take an allergy pill. But just as I was taking a swig of the water to get the tablet to go down is when I caught a movement out of the corner of my eye. I slowly turned my head to the left and saw an old man standing at the stove pouring himself a cup of coffee. I about choked on the water and pill going down my throat. I blinked and the old man was gone. What the hell am I imagining? All I could do was stare at the stove. As my adrenaline slowly eased off, I marked it down in my mind as being really exhausted. I thought about smoking a cigarette, but decided I'd better lay back down before my alarm went off in four hours. I climbed back into bed, making sure the pup was snuggled in beside me. Bzz, bzz, bzz. I reached up to turn my alarm off, only it wouldn't go off. I looked at the time on my watch and it read 6.05 a.m. I realized my alarm wasn't making the sound. The old man was standing at the stove again. He was playing with the induction stove top. So paralyzed with fear, I just watched as he cooked an entire meal. I could actually smell the bacon. I reached up to wipe at my eyes thinking I was nuts because of being drowsy from the allergy mess and I'd taken a few minutes back. Slowly, I brought my hand back down. Once again, the old man was gone. Again. I got up and flipped on the light above me. I went to the stove top and felt the induction burn. It showed that it was still locked and cool to the touch. Then I felt the toaster. It was cold as well. Now I was really awake. I pulled down a cup and poured coffee into it. When I picked it up to put it in the microwave, I just about dropped the scalding hot cup. I carefully sat the cup back down. How in the hell is my cup so hot? I passed my hand over the top of my cup just to see if I was delusional. By God, it was steaming hot. I then felt the coffee pot. It too was absolutely hot but the cooktop was cold as ice. I stepped away from the kitchen area and sat back down at the dinette set. Needless to say, I didn't go back to sleep. Well, I must have dozed though, sitting upright because the next thing I heard was my phone's alarm. I turned off the alarm and waited for my morning news report and weather to start. Gotta love technology when it can wake you up, tell time, weather, and the news all in one little box. I shrugged off the obvious nightmare I had and got ready for work. Austin, my husband, came downstairs and grabbed himself a cup of coffee. Hey, thanks for making fresh coffee, he said to me. 
I was in the middle of brushing my hair out as he spoke. I froze with my brush halfway through my long hair. But I didn't make any fresh coffee. I thought you made it last night, was my reply to Austin. I quickly finished brushing my hair and stowed my brush. I looked up to see my husband just staring at me. What? I asked him. I know you made the coffee, hun. The smell is what woke me up. He stated as he shifted to lean against the counter with his back and took a drink out of his cup. All I could do was stare at him. I finished getting ready for work, not saying anything else. I grabbed my coat and car keys, gave Austin a kiss on the cheek, and told him, I'll see you at lunch, hon. Going out the door, the blue healer pup, Gidget, followed me to the door and waited patiently for me to give her a pat on the head in our daily routine. I closed the door, making sure she wasn't following me out the door, too. I got in the car and headed to work, thinking of the day ahead of me. By the time I arrived at work, I already had my day planned out. With no more thoughts of the previous night, the morning went by fast. Lunch was a simple affair of sandwiches, chips, and soda. As was our lunchtime ritual, I told my husband how the day was going. Austin listened and then told me he was busy writing code for a new software program. We continued the light conversation through the rest of the meal. Keeping an eye on the clock, my lunch hour passed quickly. I gave Austin another kiss on the cheek, telling him I would see him after work, and left to head back. The rest of the afternoon passed just as quickly as the morning had. I reached up to turn the monitor off. I grabbed my purse and was ready to get up when the screen turned back on. Odd. Well, but it happens sometimes. I stood up, pushed my desk chair back under the desk, and made my way to the time clock to punch out. Looking back down the hall as I was leaving, I saw a soft light turn off. I didn't think anything of it. The drive home was pleasant with clear skies. Maybe we won't get those stones after all, I thought. I pulled into the driveway, stopped the car, I grabbed my purse and got out and locked the doors. Heading towards the RV, I could swear I heard the doors unlock. I stopped, thinking a button got pressed by my fingers, relocked the car and headed into the RV. I said to the room at large, I'm home. The pup was bouncing all over the place from excitement. I reached down to pet her head, acknowledging the husky and greyhound at the same time. Everyone's tail that could be wagging was doing double time. <laughs> I laughed at the side as I patted each head. I turned around to hang up my keys and just about jumped out of my skin with a surprised grunt. The old man was standing by the front door looking at me. All I could do was stare back. Now, don't get me wrong. I do believe there are ghosts, but to have one standing dead in front of you would rattle anyone's nerves. I took a deep breath and said hello to the old man. I reached up to hang my keys on the hook by the front door. As I turned around, the old man was still there. I had so hoped he would disappear. But no, he was still there. The only thing I could think to say was, Hi, my name is Renee. Glad to meet you. My husband asked from the other room, Who are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm home, I replied. I looked over and the old man was gone. I looked for the bottle of whiskey to pour me a drink. Now, I don't normally hardly drink at all, but today I did. I mixed the alcohol with a can of Coke and took a swig. The alcohol was a bit strong, but I would nurse it most of the night anyway. And yes, I'm a lightweight, I said to myself. I looked towards the stove where the yellow roasting pan was cooking pot roast, potatoes, and carrots. The aroma made my stomach growl. Oh, but it smelled so good. I sat my drink on the dinette table, put my stuff up, and went to go check on my husband to see if he was ready to eat what he had concocted. I stopped dead in my tracks. There, on the monitor, was a picture of the old man. Who is that? That, that picture on your screen, I asked as I pointed at it. Oh, my husband said, wait until I tell you what I found out about this RV. It says here that he owned it. His name was Mike Hicks. I guess he died in here too. 
The front office says that they hadn't seen him for a couple of days and did a well check on him. That's how they found him. I guess he didn't have any family here, so no one really knew him. Robert said he had to file a lien on our RV because there was rent due on it. He sold it to us for the cost of the back rent. Austin continued his narrative. The obituary says he was 89 years old, had retired from the army as a lieutenant colonel. I guess he'd served for over 35 years, you know, but that's just an article recording. He wasn't married, but he had one daughter whom Robert couldn't get a hold of. But when she called him back, the woman told Robert he could have the damned RV. She didn't want it and hung up on him. Interesting bit of history on this old girl, huh? I felt a strange cold draft go up the back of my neck. I turned my head right to find the old man standing there looking at the screen also. He looked at me and nodded his head ever so slightly. In return, I nodded back, putting my hand on Austin's shoulder. That night, as I was getting ready for bed, I realized that the old man had been trying to tell me to look at the monitor at work with it turning on by itself. Coming back to the present, I noticed the smell of coffee. Fresh, brewed coffee. I smiled as I looked around the room. I said good night to no one in particular. Now, as time went by, I would periodically see the old man making his coffee, bacon, and toast. Usually, I would just smile and nod at him. You know, you hear about ghosts that are so destructive, but our resident ghost was very accommodating always making the RV smell so good, just wanting his coffee and breakfast. The smell of fresh brewed coffee, though, was how I always knew he was in the room with me. I could deal with that. One year later, Austin came down the stairs and walked over to me and asked me in a whisper, Do you see that old man by the stove? I laughed and nodded my head yes. Austin looked over to him and then back to me. I didn't know we had company. You should have said something, he said exacerbated. Once again, all I could do was laugh. After the laughter subsided enough, I replied, Honey, he isn't company. Austin looked at me as though I had lost my mind. I told him, That's Mike. He used to live here. I watched all the color drain from his face. He looked at the old man for a few seconds and then back to me. You're telling me he's a ghost? Asked Austin with a bit of a squeak to his voice. Yes, nodding my head yes at the same time. Understanding finally dawned on Austin's face as he sat down heavily on the couch. And how long has he been here? Austin asked me. Oh, since the third night we've been in the RV, I replied. Paling even more, he asked. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Do you mean to tell me we have a resident ghost living with us? I nodded my head yes and started to laugh again. All Austin could do was look at me in amazement. Of course, it took Austin a few months to get used to seeing the old man. Now he just nods at him as though he's part of the family. I have to laugh at Austin, though. He asked me one day, do you think he'll make us coffee at some point in the future? We started laughing together until we were both spent. I guess life can throw you curveballs periodically. Thinking back on all that has transpired, I wonder if the old man would be with us for the duration of our lives. It just wouldn't be right if he wasn't. In what has become a nightly ritual, I turned off the lights, looked around and said, good night Mike, and headed off to bed. Thank you for listening to Ghostly Wonders, a story written by Jamie Lynn Michaels and narrated by Tracy Babian, produced by Privy Projects. We'll see you next time. Chauncey Haworth, Mark Slade, and Lothar Tuppen, the demented minds behind the Twisted Pulp Radio Hour, bring you... Twisted Pulp Magazine. A journey beyond surreality to worlds you never knew or hoped existed. Worlds of the supernatural. Worlds of dark satire. Worlds of nightmarish futures. 
Twisted Pulp Magazine. If you thought the 21st century was weird enough already, think again. Twisted Pulp Magazine. A step beyond your grandfather's pulp. Available at digitalvaudeville.com. That's D I G I T A L V A U D E V I L L E dot com. Mm-hmm.